Today is the 8th of April, 2009. We are at the Buffalo Erie County Historical Society. My name is Wayne Clark. My assistant is Kathleen Matthews. And sir, for the record, would you please state your full name and your date and place of birth? Yes. Uh, Lucian C. Parlato. That's spelled P-A-R-L-A-T-O. I was born in Buffalo, New York in 1925. Okay. And did you attend school in Buffalo? I attended school, yes. I attended Holy Angels Parochial School and uh, then Canisius High School. Uh, I uh, enlisted in the Army Reserves uh, immediately upon my graduation, as did most of my classmates in one branch of the service or the other. Okay. And did you uh, enlist in Buffalo? Yes, I did. I uh, attended Canisius College while I was waiting for a telegram from the War Department, as it was called in those days, mm -hmm. to report for active duty. Okay. Any reason why you picked the Army? Why? Uh, I, I, I was a pretty good swimmer, but I didn't relish the thought of drowning <laughs> <laughs> out of the ocean. Uh, I, I'm the sort of fellow that likes to keep his feet on the ground. Okay. Don't like heights either. All right. And do you uh, recall where you were when you heard about uh, Pearl Harbor being attacked? Oh, yes, I, I, I certainly do. I was 16 years of age. I was a student at Canisius High School. It was a Sunday afternoon. Uh, I was at home. My mother I was out. My father had died a few years before that. And I, I believe I was just at home studying that Sunday afternoon, but when my mother returned to our home on Porter Avenue in Buffalo, she broke the news to me about this uh, very unfortunate attack by the Japanese on Pearl Harbor. Mm -hmm. All right. And uh, when you did enter the service, where did you go for your basic training? Well, first of all, uh, I, when I got a telegram, I, would, I had enrolled in the Army Specialized Training Program, ASTP, mm -hmm. so I was ordered to report to Cornell University, presumably for a four-year course of study. Mm -hmm. And we were given uh, uniforms, with, uh, they were uh, purple in color, we used to uh, refer to ourselves as the Purple Commandos, but uh, I did go to Cornell University, which was a three-hour bus ride from my home in Buffalo, and I <clears throat> was assigned to uh, a, a dormitory there with other fellows from New York City, from New Jersey, and other places. And then, uh, sooner than we thought, we all got telegrams from the War Department again to report for active duty at Fort Dix near Trenton, New Jersey. So that was the end of our academic escapade. It was yeah. just lasted for three months. Mm -hmm. So on December the 18th uh, of 1943, I was sworn into active duty in, in the United States Army. Okay. And uh, whereabouts did you complete your basic? Fort Benning, Georgia. Fort Benning. Mm -hmm. Three months. It was at an infantry basic? Yes, it was. Did you uh, go on to jump school? To Par where? Parachute school at all? No, no. I, uh, <clears throat> after completion of basic training, I was assigned uh, to the 87th Infantry Division, Golden Acorn Division, and uh, <clears throat> uh, and then we went for further training to Fort Jackson, South Carolina. <clears throat> so that was about from March <clears throat> till October, advanced training, mm -hmm. field training. And at, at that time, I was assigned to an anti-tank unit in the 87th Inf Infantry Division Headquarters Company. Okay. Uh, did you go overseas as a division? Yes, yes. Uh, it was, uh, I believe, late October of 1943. My mother and uncle and brothers and sisters came to New York City. We embarked 
on the Queen Elizabeth, an English ship, mm -hmm. uh, to go overseas uh, into combat. Uh, it took five days, during all which time I was absolutely seasick. Mm -hmm. uh, we crossed the Atlantic Ocean without incident, and we landed on the northern coast of Scotland. And we were taken by train to a staging area in Stoke-on-Trent, England, which was about 20 miles from Coventry, which had been demolished by German bombs, mm -hmm. although I never saw it. But we were there for several weeks, again undergoing training and getting ready to go into combat. Okay. Uh, at the end of that training, whereabouts were you sent? Then we got our marching orders, so to speak, and uh, we were we embarked on a uh, uh, a ship uh, to carry us across the English Channel to Le Havre, France. That's where we disembarked. That's where we uh, entered. Continental Europe. Was that part of the D-Day invasion no, or after? No, this was uh, the first week of December 1944. Okay. December 19. So, okay. so it, it was, was six after. months after D-Day. Okay. All right. And uh, once you were once you arrived in La Havre, what happened next? Well, uh, uh, we didn't stay there very long. I remember it was pretty cold and miserable. So then we got our orders to go east to the Tsar mm -hmm. uh, uh, Theater. And uh, we went to uh, near Metz. Metz, which is in Alsace-Lorraine, mm -hmm. uh, which has switched sides from France to Germany. Uh, and we went into action there. That was the first time, first time you saw combat? Yes. And what was that experience like for you? Well, I was in a head, headquarters company, uh, which was pretty lucky because we, uh, we were motorized. Mm -hmm. We were not really foot soldiers. We were in an infantry company, but uh, we, we had, were originally assigned to anti-tank, but they had a 37 millimeter uh, artillery, which was, which was absurd. It was so ineffective against the German armor. So then they, they upgraded to, I think, to 75 millimeter. But uh, anyway, somehow, we, it was uh, considered to be more important to, uh, to search for mines, landmines, mm -hmm. than anti-tank. So our actual work primarily was removal of landmines that, that the Germans had laid. Were you involved directly with that? No, I I wasn't. I uh, not not to, well it, to a certain extent, yes. But then we also carried ammunition. Mm -hmm. We used to uh, remove uh, trees that were uh, had been cut down to fall down uh, in on the roads to obstruct the advance of uh, mm -hmm. of the uh, our, our forces. But in the Tsar, the Tsar, there wasn't too much of that because it was a stalemate. Mm -hmm. uh, we had been stopped dead, and we made, uh, we used to go on reconnoitering missions, and that's why I got my first, first uh, fire, uh, received the first artillery fire, mortar fire. There was a lot mm -hmm. of mortar, and uh, but we were there only <laughs> maybe a week or two when the Battle of the Bulge broke out in the Ardennes Forest. So we were hurriedly uh, put on trucks and transported north. This was just at Christmas time. Mm -hmm. And we arrived uh, in that theater of action in uh, Belgium, in the Ardennes Forest. And uh, we got uh, a pretty good taste of combat there. I remember every, every night, you would just hear boom, 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 boom. It was a continuous artillery barrage from one side or the other. Mm -hmm. And uh, many a night we had to sleep out in the open, on the ground. This was one of the coldest winters. It was the coldest winter in many years in that area. But we used to sleep with all of our clothes on. 
We had blankets. Fortunately, I didn't uh, suffer from frostbite. Uh, but uh, uh, again, uh, I was lucky, and, and my own unit was because the headquarters company was motorized. That meant we traveled by by truck, and those trucks had to could not be left out in the open. They had to be put next to a barn or a house so they would not be as visible mm -hmm. to the enemy uh, reconnaissance, especially air reconnaissance. Uh, so uh, m several nights we were lucky enough to sleep indoors, but many nights out in the open. Mm -hmm. And then we went into action uh, uh, again for a while. It was, it was very slow going, but then as the tide turned and we began to defeat the German forces, uh, we started to accelerate and and uh, it became a race that the Germans were running away. We were following them. Mm -hmm. And uh, another a vivid memory I have is of the hundreds of German vehicles that had been destroyed by our Air Force and were littering the, the roadside. They were, they were all, de uh, you know, destroyed mm -hmm. by uh, bombs and, and uh, machine gun fire from our planes because we had air superiority. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the, the, then the Battle of the Bulge that lasted till through January and then February mm -hmm. we uh, advanced into Germany, uh, crossed the Rhine River. Our division took the city of Cologne. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, uh, Koblenz, Koblenz, and Koblenz uh, is on the Rhine River, and it's, it's always been famous for its wines. So we we did find some champagne there and other wines. Uh, a lot. We stayed didn't stay there very long, and then we continued on our way. Now, did you get any kind of uh, break or rest or resupply? So. Or change of clothes, showers, oh, anything yeah, like that? We, I, I thought we were pretty well supplied. Uh, mm -hmm. The food was a, a K rations, you know, it wasn't yeah. a gourmet meal. Uh, but I can't say we ever suffered from starvation. Uh, frostbite uh, uh, and, and enemy fire, those, those were the things that bothered us. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, along the way, I had my helmet blown off by a mortar that landed in mud a few feet away from me. If it had been out in the open on a hard surface, I probably would have been dead. Uh, that's, that's the closest I came to being a casualty. I, <clears throat> my helmet was blown right off my head. Uh, but I saw several of my comrades uh, dead from mm -hmm. machine gun fire, uh, in many cases, uh, and, or being carried out with their, uh, their foot uh, mangled or destroyed from uh, mines that they didn't detect in time. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and we went on from, from Koblenz, uh, we went into southern Germany and our, our, the second city that uh, we took was the city of Plauen. Now Plauen is not a very well known uh, city. Uh, but I'll never forget it because it was absolutely, totally devastated. It was just a pile of rubble, and it was completely abandoned. There wasn't a soul there. By that time, the war had ended. Mm -hmm. So we ended up, uh, 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 my fellow soldiers, we had nothing to do. We played cards sometimes, and that was about it. You recall hearing about uh the death of President Roosevelt? Oh, yeah, surely. Uh, April, I think it was April the 4th, just about oh, mm -hmm. a, a month before VE Day. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, once, once the war ended in Europe on uh, VE Day, was there celebrations? Uh, yes, for the first time in my life I got drunk. Mm -hmm. uh, there were uh, uh, many DPs, uh, deported persons, mm -hmm. uh, who were, had been had escaped from the German control, 
of course, the Germans just abandoned them, I suppose. Mm -hmm. But there were a lot of, uh, uh, of these uh, DPs and uh, some of them, uh, there were quite a few Polish, I remember. And we ran into, or I ran into, my, and my immediate friends ran into someone who, who gave us a bottle of liquor I'd never drunk in, uh, I had never been drunk in my life, but I, I remember there was a, a creek or a river there, and I was on the bank of the river, and I was drunk. <laughs> so, but of course, we didn't have any more combat duties at that time, and it was just a question of waiting to be uh, reassigned. And of course, the war with Japan was not over, mm -hmm. so we were destined to go to uh, go to Japan, uh, to invade Japan, uh, to end the war. So after the war ended in May, I believe it was in June, that our division was reorganized and we were shipped back to the United States only as like a brief pause before we would go into action again mm -hmm. in the Orient and against Japan. So I was, I got, we all got furloughs to go home for maybe a week. So I mm -hmm. went home for about a week in August. And while I was there, uh, the uh, atom bomb was dropped on Hiroshima, mm -hmm. Nagasaki. And so that, it was VE Day then. Okay. So. Now just going back, uh, were you aware at all of the concentration camps? Uh, we did. We did visit when we were in Germany. I, uh, uh, I don't think it was Buchenwald, but it was a famous concentration camp. Dachau. It, I think Dachau is more like Poland, isn't it? No, it's it's in Germany. I don't know. It might have been Buchenwald, but it was a it was definitely a German concentration camp. However, it had been cleaned up. Mm -hmm. uh, there was, uh, I mean, there weren't any bodies. There weren't. There, it was just uninhabited, it was vacant. Uh, it had been pretty well cleaned up, but you could see all the cots there and the, the barracks and mm -hmm. the houses where they stayed. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you went uh, back to the States uh, preparing to go to Japan and the war ended. And facing certain death, we thought, mm -hmm. because they had predicted that one million of us would die mm -hmm. on the beaches of Japan. Mm -hmm. All right. And uh, at what point uh, were you discharged? Were you well, then, of course, we had a point system. Uh -huh. We had the point system. You got out of the army in order. You know, it was, uh, the first ones in were the first ones out, last ones in were the last ones out. Uh, it depended on how many points you had accumulated according to your months of service, your, your months in combat, and so forth. Mm -hmm. So I had a certain, I forget the exact number, it was 121, whatever. So at Fort Dix, I remember the only time in my life uh, I ever played basketball, but we played an awful lot of basketball. I, in fact, I remember wrenching and straining my back, having to go up on the uh, upper uh, bunk uh, and using a, a heating pad to uh, alleviate the pain, you know, from my strained back. Mm -hmm. So, but that, that was our main pastime. However, there was something else that was even more pleasant. At that time, when, when we returned, uh, we were, uh, we were Fort, back at Fort Dix. We are back at Fort Dix, which is a very short distance from New York City. Mm -hmm. And uh, the nation and uh, the community was so grateful to the returning veterans that they uh, could attend Broadway musicals without charge. So, and my brother at the time was at Princeton University in the Navy uh, college training program, at, which is right there in New Jersey. So we used, the two of us used to go into New York City to see uh, like uh, Oklahoma and mm -hmm. Broadway musicals. 
we saw a few. So we were there, I was there at, at uh, Port Dix, I believe, from September, a pretty long time, until April, and it was just about this time, I, I think it was April the 2nd that I was discharged, 1946. 46. 46. So I served 27 months. All right. And uh, once you were discharged, did you make use of the GI Bill? I did. I uh, enrolled at Harvard uh, College, and uh, I received, a, I forget how much it was, but at that time the tuition at Harvard, which is now over $50,000, was something like a couple of thousand dollars a year. Mm -hmm. yes, so I, I completed my four years. All right. And uh, you became a lawyer? Not right away. <laughs> That's another story. Uh, I, uh, I, I thought I'd like to be a professor of philosophy, so I went to this uh, University of Louvain. It's a Catholic university in Louvain, Belgium, and I wanted to study philosophy uh, and uh, follow in the footsteps of Jacques Maritain. Jacques Maritain was a French Catholic philosopher. Well, I was attending classes at the University of Louvain, but they were all in French. Mm -hmm. So that was quite difficult because they were dealing very abstract uh, subjects. And uh, then my brother who had, who had been in the Navy, he, he became ill here back in Buffalo and he, was, he almost died. And uh, so I said I was going back to Buffalo while well, I was staying in a, uh, a, a rooming house and when I, I told my a landlady that, she was a Belgian lady, and uh, I told her I was leaving. Then I got a telegram saying that my brother was all right, and I went back to my landlady and told her I wanted to stay. She said, you can't. She said, you told me you're leaving, you're leaving. That's hmm. <laughs> So if you want to call that a casualty. So I had to look for another I had to look for another place to live, and then I just got discouraged. I said, "I, I don't, I don't want to go through with this." So I, I left Louvain and I traveled in Europe for 15 months because I had been over there in the war, but I couldn't, I couldn't do any sightseeing. We mm -hmm. had more important business, so I stayed there and I went to France and Spain and Italy and Germany, and Austria, and came and I came back to the United States. All right. Did you join any veterans organizations at all? Uh, no, I never have done that. However, I have attended two conventions of our division. Okay. In 1993, September of 1993, I, I, I went with my wife. We, we drove to Louisville, Kentucky, mm -hmm. where I met many of my old comrades, right from my, my company, mm -hmm. uh, Captain, I forget his name, uh, Hall, L Lieutenant Hall, Lieutenant Hall. And uh, there were a, a few of my old friends there from, from combat, 87th Infantry Division. That was a very nice event for three days and then I believe Kathleen said something about it that uh, we had a we had a reunion here at Adams Mark Hotel in Buffalo in September of 2005, which my wife and I attended also. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, how do you think your time in the service changed or affected your life? Well, uh, first of all, when when I I was in high school, I was very studious. I, I was not much for sports. I mean, I was pretty much of a bookworm. Mm -hmm. And so physically, I, I was not as firm and muscular as I could have been. Well, the Army straightened me out that way <laughs> with all the marching that we did and uh, the obstacle courses, uh, and, you know, const constant exercise. So I came out of the service a much more rugged individual. And uh, in other ways, the discipline, uh, of course, was great. 
Mm -hmm. I think uh, for character formation and the, the sense of history that, that we got of being in, right smack in the middle of a great historic event. Mm -hmm. okay? So I always, uh, I was very proud of that I served my country in that fashion. I was glad that I survived without being killed or even injured. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I formed uh, friendships. There was uh, another fellow from, from Buffalo who had gone to St. Joseph's Colleg Collegiate Institute. He later became a priest, as a matter of fact. Uh, and another fellow by the name of John Thornton, he was from New York City. He was from Ireland. And uh, we, the three of us got to be very good friends. Uh, and so you know, it, it was a wonderful experience. Uh, at that time, too, you know, the war was very popular. It wasn't like Vietnam that there were protests. Mm -hmm. Everyone was in this war because we thought we were fighting for a noble cause against evil powers. Uh, so all in all, of course, it took three years of my life. So I, when I mm -hmm. entered college, instead of being 18, I was 21. But that's a small sacrifice. All right. And uh, you've got some photos? Did I take photos? No, no. You've got oh, a photo? I brought a photo of myself. OK. If you hold that up uh, in front of you, I can zoom right in on that. Okay. And uh, where and when was that taken? I'm quite sure it was at Fort Dix, or immediately upon my return to Buffalo, because I, I still had my uniform. Mm -hmm. I believe I, I did come home with the uniform, so it was probably uh, like in April or May of 1946. Okay. And uh, were there any other photos you wanted to show us? It was that group photo. Uh, yes, I have. I have always <coughs> kept and cherished this uh, 345th Infantry Regiment, which is a part of the 87th Infantry uh, Division, uh, Golden Acorn Division, and also part of the Third Army that was commanded by famous General George S. Patton. Mm -hmm. uh, and this book has really. Uh, weathered the years very well. It's in excellent condition. It smells a little musty, but it's not yellowed. And it gives a complete history of the 87th Infantry Division, uh, all of the battles that we were in. It has pictures of the commanders of General Patton uh, and uh, the regimental commanders. Uh, it describes our uh, the course that we followed, the Tsar, and later the Battle of the Bulge. Uh, it contains some graphic pictures. Uh, uh, also, uh, these are German prisoners. I remember there were, we used to see crowds of German prisoners. They were, they were pretty eager to get out because they were being thoroughly trashed by that time. And there's pictures of all the towns and villages that we came, that we captured. It's a wonderful book. It's an excellent job of reporting. See? Shows we were reassembled at Fort Benning, Georgia. I even forgot about that. <laughs> uh, and then uh, each a uh, company uh, had its picture taken. I'm in there. Uh, I think I think I'm right right here, right there. I was 19 years old. I had a lot of hair. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, thank you very much for your interview. Oh, you're welcome.